Hello guys, this is Jay Coleman, instructor for Shipper's Choice. I've um, got a Class A pre-trip here. I'm going to go ahead and run through the walk around, which is the first portion of your DMV test. Um, <clears throat> after you pass this, you'd move on to your skills test, and then of course your road test. And if you do well, you will get a CDL. Um, so, let's get started. Um, and we're going to start with the posture of this vehicle. Um, it's not leaning. If it were leaning, it'd be due to a suspension problem, a shift in cargo, or a flat tire. After that, we're going to look below. We're going to look under the engine for any puddles or leaks. We're looking for engine oil, coolant, power steering fluid, and I don't see any leaks. We're going to go up to the bumper. The bumper's not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present. It's secured to the vehicle. My license plate is current and up to date. It's not cracked, bent, or broken, and that's secured to the vehicle. My grill, not cracked, bent, or broken. Um, all bolts are present, no obstructions. At this point, we're going to check our lights, our headlights. Our headlights are clear in color, not cracked, chipped, or broken, clean, no condensation. And um, of course, if you have screws or hardware, you want to mention that. If you don't, in this case, we don't, we're not going to say nothing. Um, and we're going to check both of those the same way. Um, now at this point we have our um, turn signals, our three IDs there in the center, and our two clearance on the outside. The way I'm going to do this, save a little time, is I'm checking my turn signals, my ID lights, and my clearance lights. They're all amber in color. None are cracked, chipped, or broken. They're all clean with no condensation. And of course, if you got screws, once again, they're present. In this case, we don't. Okay, I'm going to check our, um, our mirror bracket, spot mirror bracket, and our spot mirror. Our mirror bracket's not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present. I'm going to check my spot mirror. It's not cracked, chipped, or broken, and it's clean. And if you have two, you'll check them both the same way. We're going to check our wiper arms. Our windshield wiper arms are not cracked, bent, or broken properly mounted skier to the vehicle and we'll check the function of those wipers during our in-cab inspection. I'm going to check my windshield. It's not cracked, chipped or broken and it's clean. The inspection's current and up to date and I have no illegal stickers on my windshield. You also want to check around the weather stripping around the outside of your windshield. It's not cracked, dry, rotted or broken and I don't see any evidence of leaks. And uh, of course, once we're in the in-cab inspection, we'll make sure of that. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty much all you'll do here at the front of the vehicle. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, open up the hood and we'll get started on the uh, driver's side. Okay, now keep in mind we just finished the front of the vehicle. Um, and I do want to say about checking the function of your lights. Yes, we just checked to make sure they weren't cracked, chipped, or broken, they're clean. But you also want to check the function, make sure they work properly in the front and the rear. Um, ask your examiner or say, Mr. or Mrs. Examiner, would you mind to uh, assist me or help me with, ch with checking my lights? Um, up front, you're going to get in the driver's seat, and up front, you're going to turn on your headlights. You're going to um, demonstrate that your high beams work properly, your four way flashers, your turn signals, both left and right. And, um, of course, your clearance and IDs, they'll kind of check without, um, on their own without be it being said. So um, leave your lights on. Even as the examiner walks around to the back, leave your lights on. Um, I was told by one examiner named Chris that um, they actually check the side markers and the uh, clearance lights as long as you leave the lights on. It goes without saying, but they do that, according to him. Of course, that's just what they say. Anyway. Um, if you happen to get an examiner that just stands here after you've checked the front, um, say, Mr. or Mrs. Examiner, would you please walk around to the back and um, check the rear for me? Because they wouldn't like anything more than for you to do the front and then forget to go to the back or have them go to the back and then you lose credit. So keep that in mind. So we finished the front. Let's pretend we did our lights. We're moving over here to the uh, driver's side. 
and we're going to start with our hub oil seal and we're going to work our way into the engine bay. So my hub oil seal, it's not cracked, bent or broken. Um, all bolts are present. It's filled to the proper level and I see no leaks. It's, it's important that you say descriptors with reservoirs and stuff like this holding fluid. Um, descriptors like filled to the proper level. It's not leaking. I'll check this daily. You know, things like that is the most important. Um, I've realized that most people's shipper's choice may see properly mounted and secured to the vehicle a million times on their, on their pre-trip. That's not the most important thing to be said, okay? It just isn't. Um, Virginia examiners would much rather, if they see, if you see bolts, say all bolts are present. Obviously, if all bolts are present and tight, it's properly mounted and secured to the vehicle. You know, so they, they can give you a hard time about that properly mounted and secured. Things like um, a drive shaft or just a stand or like, for example, the windshield wiper arms, not cracked, been or broken, properly mounted and secured to the vehicle. So not much else I can say about it. So I might throw a properly mounted and secured on it. You don't want to use that after every single part. It sounds so um, rehearsed, you know. So anyways, hub oil seal, not cracked. Not cracked, been or broken, all bolts are present, filled to the proper level, and it's not leaking. I'm going to check all my lug nuts at this time. All are present. I see no rust or shiny metal to indicate looseness. I see my rim, or I'm checking my rim, and through this peephole here, I'm checking my brake drum. They're not cracked, been or broken. There's no illegal holes or unauthorized welds. You know, and I do get a lot of people on this. They want to say not cracked, been or broken, properly mount secured to the vehicle with no um, unauthorized welds and or you know it, you don't have to get into all that. That that's a little much, and that's what I mean by if you got other descriptors to use, that's completely fine. So my rim and brake drums not cracked, been or broken, um, no illegal holes or unauthorized welds, and that's good enough. That will get that will get you credit. Um, I'm gonna check for my metal valve stem and metal cap. I believe it's right here and it's not leaking. Of course, I would check my tire pressure daily with a tire gauge or a rubber mallet. And um, the stem and cap's not cracked, bent, or broken, and it's secured to the vehicle. Now, at this point, I'm gonna check my outer, upper, inner wall of my tire, front tire. Um, it's no ABC, abrasions, bulges, or cuts. The um, tread can be no less than 4 seconds of an inch in the major grooves, and these cannot be Mismatch, regroove, recap, or retread. Remember, this is the front steer tire on the driver's side. Steer tires cannot be mismatched. Okay? No less than 430 seconds. Now, get a shot here of the back side of that brake drum and rim. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. Yep. Now, if you notice right there, that little hole right there in this piece of metal, that's your brake shield, okay? If that brake shield wasn't there, we would see our brake shoes and our lining. Keep in mind that our brake shoes and our lining actually, um, you know, when you step on the service brake, actually pushes up against the inside of that brake drum, causing a little friction, and um, that's what helps you stop, okay? But if you see this brake shield here, we are going to have to call that out. So, I'm checking my brake shield. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Through that peephole that I just showed you, we view our brake shoes and lining, which is no less than a quarter inch of thickness, and there's no oil and the grease present. Okay. From there, we got an air brake chamber and our slack adjuster. My slack adjuster sits at a 90 degree angle when the brakes are applied no more than an inch when I pull out on it. It's not cracked, bent, or broken and all cotter pins and cotter keys are in place. My air brake chamber is not cracked, bent, or broken. I see bolts on it so all bolts and hardware are present and tight. I hear no leaks because remember we got compressed air flowing through these and it does have a hose so I'm checking my hose, it's not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. My fittings are tight and I don't hear any leaks. The reason I was kind of stressing that right there, remember all metal parts are always cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present, at the very least. Um, all plastic and glass, it's always cracked, chipped, broken, and clean. Um, any rubber, 
like hoses, belts, not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. Okay, wiring would be not burnt, cut, or frayed. Um, and I, I know I said plastic and glass. I thought I said uh, not. It's not dry rotted. Just in case, if I didn't, great. If I did, then um, it's plastic and glass is not cracked, chipped, or broken, and uh, it's clean. Okay. So with that being said, if you know the parts, learn the parts first. If you don't know the parts, if you do, then something like this, you could come to and say, okay, it's my air brake chamber. I see it's metal not cracked been or broken because you know all metals not cracked been or broken I see bolts all bolts are present all, all bolts are present and tight um, I see a hose coming off of it that's made out of rubber which I just said it's not cracked dry rotted or broken and anytime you're talking about a hose you're gonna have a fitting that fitting must be tight and of course is it fluid or compressed air flowing through it um, through the air brake chamber and the hose there that's compressed air so I hear no leaks and that's just the way you can break down this pre-trip without memorizing that paper okay because you don't want to sound like a broken record all right so we're done with that let's move on into um, we can go suspension or we can go steering linkage normally I go with the steering linkage so I believe that's what we're going to do right here I got my steering shaft it's not cracked been or broken properly mounted and secured to the vehicle I got my uh, universal joint right here it's not cracked, been or broken, properly lubricated, no obstructions. Checking my steering gearbox. It's not cracked, been or broken, all bolts are present. I don't see any leaks. The hose is coming off that. It's not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. The fittings are tight, and I don't see any leaks from there as well. Okay, I'm going to check my pitman arm. <clears throat> Which, get you a good shot of that would be right about here um, a lot of them a lot of trucks you're gonna see that pitman arm actually mounted on the outside here uh, either way my pitman arm is not cracked been or broken properly mounted scared to the vehicle I'm gonna check it this time and remember your pitman arm is connected to your drag link so my drag link my steering knuckle my steering knuckle. Let's see if I can get you a clear shot of the steering arm. It's gonna be tough to see. There we go. I believe. Yes. So you saw what I said was the steering knuckle. Here we got the steering arm, and what's connected to that is the tie rod. So to say it again, I'm checking my. Uh, drag link, my steering knuckle, my steering arm, which again is right here, and my tie rod which goes in, to the other side. <clears throat> None of those are cracked, bent, or broken. None of them are cracked, bent, or broken. Um, all properly mounted and secured to the vehicle with no obstructions. Um, I got my three castle nut and cotter pins, one here on the pitman arm and drag link one connecting the drag link and the steering knuckle and then another one connecting the steering arm and the tie rod um, <clears throat> now again anytime there's moving parts this is kind of something I like to say um, it's not in your paper but anything with moving parts I've always felt better saying no obstructions just for the simple fact you could be driving along and who's to say you don't get some rope or something tangled up in there so I've always been a big fan of adding on uh, no obstructions any moving parts <clears throat> okay, so that's our that's our steering linkage. We're going to get into our frame and suspension at this point. We're going to check our frame here. It's not cracked, been or broken. No illegal holes, unauthorized welds. Got my uh, shock absorber. It's not cracked, been or broken. All bolts are present. I don't see any leaks. I'm going to check my um, leaf springs at this time. It should be right through here. Okay, right through here and up through there. My leaf springs are not cracked, bent, or broken. If more than one fourth were missing, it could put my vehicle out of service. Okay, now, well, let me finish that actually. All in a line, none are missing. If more than one fourth of the, of the leaf spring were missing, it could put my vehicle out of service. Uh, one thing I hear a lot 
a student saying um, no more than one fourth of an inch is missing, which is not an inch, it's no more than one fourth. And then they go about saying, and I would put it out of service. No, you would not put it out of service. The DOT would put it out of service. And um, when they say one fourth, what they're talking about is let's say you got a fourth of the leaf spring and there's a crack from one end of the leaf spring to the other side of the leaf spring, which is keeping a fourth of that leaf spring from being connected to the rest. Okay? So that just means there's a crack from one end to the other separating one-fourth of that leaf spring from being connected to the rest of the leaf springs. And if DOT was to see something like that, they would, they could put you out of service. You may take it to a mechanic, but you are not going to put it out of service and slap an out-of-service uh, out sticker on it like they will. So that's the difference. Alright, so we got our U-bolts and our anchor plate. Let's see if I can zoom in here. U-bolts and anchor plate, not cracked but are broken. Properly mounted and secured to the vehicle. All bolts are present. Right up. Let's see if I can get a better shot of it. Right here. Matter of fact, it's not a bad little shot. Back here is going to be your rear leaf spring mount. Okay. What you see on the outside there is actually the bottom of the leaf spring shackle. Some of the plastic here for the uh, wheel wheel is actually covering the rest of that shackle up. Um, but I've been hearing lately the shackles so many different places. It's only in one place. Well, two places. And it's only on the front of the truck, front of the tractor suspension, okay, on the driver's side and the passenger side. That's the only place you're going to find a shackle. And, of course, that sits at a 45-degree angle. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present. My rear mount's not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present. Secured to the vehicle. There's no leaf spring clamps on these Volvos. So, um, let's see here. Okay, here's my leaf spring. I'm going to follow that. So I'm going to get you a shot of the mount. There we go. Kind of. Excuse my camera in here. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Alright, so the leaf springs come down, and right here where it stops at, that's your front leaf spring mount. Okay? It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Properly mounted, secured to the vehicle. All bolts are present. Okay. Now, that's our suspension. Now it's time to move on into the engine bay. Okay? One of the first things I see here is my power steering reservoir, my alternator, okay? So you want to come up with some type of order, but practice saying this pre-trip in the same way every time. That way you get good at it, you get good at saying it, and you don't have to, um, or you won't be thrown off near as easy that way. So let's get right to it. Uh, my alternator's not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present. My wiring is not burnt, cut, or frayed. My alternator is belt driven. My belt, being as rubber, is not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. When I push in the center, it's no more than one fourth of play for uh, Virginia license holders, and it's no uh, more than three quarters of an inch play for Maryland and DC. Okay? Again, that's belt driven. It's not cracked, dry rotted, or broken, no more than a quarter inch for VA when I push in the center. No more than three quarters for any Maryland DC students. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get right into the um, power steering reservoir. I'm going to check my bra uh, power steering reservoir. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. I don't see any leaks. I check the level through the dipstick. I pull it out, wipe it clean, reinsert it, pull it back out, and check the level. If it's low, I'll refill here and the filler cap. The hoses running off the uh, power steering reservoir, not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. I don't see any leaks and my fittings are tight. Now technically, um, some of the hoses off that gearbox you've already checked, but just in case, I covered them again. My uh, oil dipstick is not cracked, bent, or broken, or the oil dipstick tube and filler tube. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. I don't see any evidence of leaks. 
checking my oil, I'd pull the dipstick out, wipe it clean, reinsert, pull it back out and check the level. If it's low, we refill here in the oil filler tube. Okay. My air intake hose. This right here, you can get you can get carried away with saying my upper intake hose, my lower intake hose. You're not going to get docked for saying intake hose, period. Some states it may not even be a requirement anymore. But don't worry about that. Just say what's on the paper. It's not going to hurt anybody learning a little something extra. So, all I would say and all I ever did say when I was on my test was I'm checking my air intake hose. My metal portion's not cracked or bent. The rubber portion's not cracked, dry rotted or broken. And my fittings are all tight. Now that doesn't have compressed air, so we're not going to have to check that. You don't have to check none of these fan blades. I don't know who started that, or you don't got to check the radiator. I don't know who started that, but you don't have to check all that stuff. Now just to cover myself, I'm going to say I'm going to check all my belts at this time. None of them are cracked, dry rotted, or broken. No more than a quarter inch when I push in the center, if I was VA. Uh, Maryland DC, again, no more than three quarters of an inch when I push in the center. My coolant reservoir. Now, even though this is plastic, it's one of the few items you're going to still say it like it's a metal port, a metal part. And you say it's not cracked, bent, or broken. Through the sight glass, I check to see that the levels at the right are filled to the proper level. If it's not, excuse me, let me restart that. Check my uh, coolant or my coolant reservoir. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Through the sight glass, I check my level. Um, if not equipped with the sight glass, I'd wait for my engine to cool and then I would remove the cap and check the level visually that way. And of course if it's low, I'm going to refill in the same place. None of the, ho or all the hoses are not cracked, dry rotted or broken. My fittings are tight and um, I don't see any evidence of leaks. Okay, whatever you do, do not remove these caps on this coolant during your test. You don't want to remove any of the caps, but especially those because it will be the end of that test. Okay, now that's about all we can do on this side, on the driver's side here. Now what we're going to do is um, walk on over to the passenger side of the truck and we're going to work our way in from there. Alright, here we are on the passenger side. And um, basically once you come to this side, and keep in mind your examiners are going to tell you some uh, a list of rules before you start the pre-trip. Um, really pay attention to what they say because it tells you so much in those rules. It's going to go something like this. I want you to do a thorough examination of the vehicle. I want you to touch, point, or grab. Touch, point, or grab, they say, to each part. I want you to go down one complete side of the vehicle, and anything you say on one side, you will not have to repeat on the other side. So basically, you're going to go down one complete side. Um, anything you say on the other side, you're just going to basically point out the differences. So um, you, you definitely don't want to do it without asking, so make sure you just um, ask the examiner what he wants you to do. You know, a lot of them are nice if they say, well, I, I need to, I want to hear that again. Nine times out of ten, you might have forgot something. So from this point, <clears throat> we asked the examiner, Mr. and Mrs. Examiner, could we skip um, these pieces here that we've already mentioned on the other side? If they say yes, move right on in. You're not going to have to do any of the frames, suspension, none of that stuff because you've already covered it. So we're only going to talk about what's different on this side, which in this case, we got an air compressor, water pump, air filter, and... Um, couple radiator hoses. We've already got our coolant reservoir in the other going side. Going down, you're still in the passenger. If you had a splash guard there, you go ahead and throw that in. That's just a quarter fender, so we're not going to mention that. No side marker light. All right, we're going to start with our mirrors. Our view mirror and our spot mirror. We're going to go ahead and check our view mirror and our spot mirror bracket. It's not correct when they're broken. All bolts are present, it's secured to the vehicle. The view mirror and spot mirror are clean and are not cracked, chipped, or broken. So I'm used to getting that side marker right there. Almost threw me off. Okay, we got a fuel tank on this side, so we're gonna go ahead and check underneath of it for leaks. We don't see any leaks, no fuel leaks. I'm gonna check my steps. It's not cracked, bent, or broken, no oil or grease present, no obstructions. On the little panel here, you have your fuel tank cap. If you were to remove it, you check to see that the rubber grommet or the rubber o-ring is present. And um, it's not cracked, dry rotted, or broken, no evidence of leaks. 
you got your fuel tank wires and hoses. Hoses are not cracked dry rod or broken, the fittings are tight, and you don't see any leaks. My fuel tank straps. The rubber portion is not cracked or dry rotted, the metal is not cracked or bent, and um, there's no rust or shiny metal to indicate looseness. Okay, from this point, you can move one up. You got your side marker right here. Sand burn color, not cracked, chipped, or broken, clean, no condensation, and all screws are present. My side door handle, it's not sticking or binding. The door opens and closes properly. And once you open the door, you check your weather stripping, make sure it's not cracked or dry rotted. Check your window crank, make sure the window rolls up and down, uh, rolls up and down properly. And um, your inside door handle is not staking or binding, as well as your inside door latch. Okay, and you want to make sure you say things like, if I open and close my door, the hinges are not staking or binding, and the door closes flush. Alright, from that point, we're going to move on down. My, um, excuse me, you got the door, it's alright. I'm going to check my exhaust mount, exhaust mounting bracket, it's not cracked, bent, or broken. It's going to be this piece here, not cracked, bent, or broken. All screws and hardware are present. I'm going to check my exhaust. I see no black soot that would indicate um, any cracks or holes. And my clamps, I'm just going to get a better picture, which would be right here. Not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present and are secured to the vehicle. Okay. Now, if you notice where we're at, we're back here with the fuel or the um, airlines and the cross member and the drive shaft and uh, universal joints are. Now, it's up to you how you want to do this. A lot of people go ahead and get this stuff out of the way and then walk around. So I'll, I'll go ahead and get the drive shafts and universals. That's about as far as I go when I'm over here. So if you notice, we got more than one universal joint and drive shaft. So I always made a plural. I'm checking my drive shafts and universal joints. Throw an S on the end of it. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Properly lubricated with no obstructions. Remember, it's not a bad idea. Any moving parts on the trucks, make sure you say no obstructions. Um, things like rope and things from the road can get tied up in there. It definitely doesn't hurt. Alright, my cross member frames not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal holes or unauthorized welds. Now, since we already checked the frame up front, it's not necessary to check the frame again back here. It's the same frame. Keep that in mind. Just your cross member or cross members and your uh, rear tractor frame. Okay? Now, from this point, I'm going to move back around to the other side. Now, if you didn't check, your fun check the function of your lights, now is a very good time when you're closing down your hood to check the function. Excuse me. Thank you. You can shut it. Now if you notice, now that we shut the hood, the headlights and turn signals are staring at us in the face. If you forgot to check your lights or the function of your lights in the beginning, now is a good time to pick those up. Now remember, you can ask the examiner to help you check the lights. You don't want to ask if, if you can. Tell them that you are going to check your lights. Would you mind to assist me? And they're going to stand out front and check the front and the rear lights, make sure that, you know, they're working properly. And just as a tip, lights are usually worth about five points. Let the examiner walk to the front. You're going to check your headlights, high beams, left, right turn signal, and your four-way flashers. If the examiner just stands there, I've seen this happen before, don't get out of the truck. Say, sir, ma'am, would you mind walking around to the back? As they do that, leave the lights on so they can check the side. It goes without saying, they're going to check your side markers as well. Once in the back, they're going to check your brake light, turn signals, four-way flashers, all that good stuff. Alright, now, with the exception of the battery box, everything on this side is exactly the same as what we just checked on the other side. So, Mr. and Mrs. Examiner, is it alright if we go ahead and skip this side since we, we said it correctly? Yes, you may. With an exception to the battery box here. Alright, if you notice, underneath the panel here you have your batteries. 
All are all are present, filled to the proper level. None of the wires are burnt, cut, or frayed, and you'll check the charge of these batteries in the end cab inspection, which should read between 12 and 14 volts. Excuse me, no excessive amount of corrosion around the post. I almost left that off. All right, oh, excuse me. We're gonna move on down. <clears throat> We're back to the other fuel tank, which remember you set it on the other side, so that's finished. We're gonna get our steps right here in our catwalk. Even if not equipped with a catwalk, you still wanna throw one in. All right, they're not cracked, bent, or broken. No obstructions, no oil or grease present. Same for the catwalk, not cracked, bent, or broken. No oil or grease present, no obstructions. My grab bar, it's not cracked, bent, or broken. Properly mounted, secured to the vehicle. No missing hardware, no missing screws. My dummy glad hands, not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present. Service light, okay, it's clear in color, not cracked, chipped, or broken. Clean, no condensation. Can't remember if I said all screws, but all screws are present. All right, from this point, we're gonna go ahead and check our air lines and our electrical. I'm checking my air lines and my electrical lines. None of them are hanging, tangled, or dragging. My red emergency line and my blue service line are not cracked, dry, rotted, or broken, and I don't hear any leaks. Remember, you got compressed air flowing, so you, if there's a hole, you probably hear a leak. The green one here is my electrical line. It's not cracked, dry, rotted, or broken. No metal braids exposed. You're gonna check your pigtail. Okay, that's the end of your electrical line here. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Properly mounted, secured to the vehicle. Check my glad hands. If I were to remove them, I'd check to see that the rubber grommet is present and that it's not cracked, dry, rotted, or broken. These are properly okay, connected. You don't hear any leaks from these lines, as well. Glad hands and our pigtail, so we're gonna move on to the okay. headboard. Okay. You check your header board. Now, from this point, broken. it's up to you where you go. Uh, Normally, no you can holes. go up to the header board. <clears throat> the holes, hit your lights dense. up at the top. All rivets just are present. Different directions. Look up at we'll the top. We'll come back to you in just a few seconds. Lights. They're amber in color. Not cracked, chipped, or broken. Clean, no condensation. Again, they're amber in color. All right, we're going to come down. And there's a couple ways you can go. Some people go up to the fifth wheel and the apron. I don't like to go there quite yet. I'm going to start with my axle seal right here. My axle seal is not cracked, bent, or broken. Um, I don't see any evidence of leaks, and all bolts are present. I want to check my um, lug nuts. My lug nuts are all present. No rust, rust or shiny metal to indicate looseness. I want to check both my rims, one here and one on the inside, and uh, my brake drum. Not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal holes or, not, or unauthorized welds. Both my metal valve stems and metal caps. They're not cracked, bent, or broken. I don't hear any leaks, and I'll check my tire pressure daily with a tire gauge or a rubber mallet. I'm going to check the outer, upper, inner wall of both my tires. There's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. It can be no less than 2 30 seconds of an inch in the major grooves, and these can be mismatched, recap, regrooved. Um, it's one other. I can't think. Anyway, you get the point. I'm going to check um, the space in between my tires, make sure they're not touching or rubbing. It's a sufficient amount of space, and there's no objects um, or obstructions caught in between. Okay. Now, at this point, you want to get up behind your. Uh, behind your tire where your brake drum is and it's the same as up front just repeat yourself check your brake or um, your brake shields not cracked bent or broken through the peephole you can view your brake shoes and lining which is no less than a quarter inch of thickness no oil or grease present and um, just remember it's the same as up front even though you can't see it right now all right now what you can see is the air brake chamber remember you're going to repeat yourself on one complete side at least. Air brake chamber is not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present, and you don't hear any. You don't hear any leaks. Um, the hoses are not cracked, dry, rotted, or broken, and your fittings are tight. Now remember, on every air brake chamber, you're going to have a slack adjuster that's on the rear. Okay, even though we can't see it, it looks identical to the front, except it may be upside down. 
um, which sits at a 90 degree angle and the brakes are applied no more than one inch when you pull out on it it's not cracked been or broken um, and all cotter keys or cotter pins are present all right now we have our front leaf spring mount here my leaf spring mount let's see if real quick if we got air bellows yes you got air bellows technically these may not be called a leaf spring more like a control arm but um just stick with the leaf spring thing for D for dmv so you got your front leaf front leaf spring mount it's not cracked bent or broken all bolts are present um your leaf spring our leaf springs are not cracked bent or broken all are in line none are missing if more than one fourth were missing could put the vehicle out of service and below that if you see this right here the bar below that's going to be a torsion bar as well, which is not cracked been or broken, and uh, it's probably mounted secured to the vehicle. The U bolts and anchor plates going to be in the center, just like you've seen on the front of the vehicle. It looks identical, um, not cracked been or broken, probably mounted secured to the vehicle. All bolts are present. Okay. Now I'm going to move behind. Hopefully we can see some of this now. The new bolt and anchor plate is going to be right here, which we just named that, so we don't have to do that. But you do have an air bellow right here, okay? There's no rear mount. If there was, you just repeat yourself. There's no rear mount on this one. You have an air bellow, which is not cracked or eye rotted or broken. No um, holes, no rips, no tears, and you don't hear any leaks, okay? Okay, from Okay, here we are with a pretty good shot of the fifth wheel. Okay, so right here, what we can see, we'll go ahead and talk about that. Um, basically, you got your kingpin. You're gonna say, um, my locking jaws are wrapped firmly around my kingpin. My kingpin shank and it's properly lubricated. And you can see your kingpin, sh kingpin shanks going up and down, connected to the trailer, and your locking jaws is what's going around it or in front of it there. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully you got the rest of your fifth wheel done already. Um, you know, if you missed anything, you got your safety release arm, you got your pivot pin and cotter pin, fifth wheel's properly lubricated, you got your fifth wheel platform and your mounting bolt, which I've already mentioned. Um, but just in case you forgot, that's just a little reminder, go ahead and, and, and cover what you missed, if you forgot. Okay, so right now we got our rear tractor frame. It's not cracked, been or broken, no illegal holes, unauthorized welds. We got our reflectors here. It's a good idea to go ahead and call out your reflectors. If you look in the Virginia manual, they definitely talk about the reflectors. So make sure you point that out and they're not cracked, chipped, or broken, and they're clean. You don't want to talk about condensation because, well, it's not a light. And of course, all screws are present. I got my combination lights. It's the two red lights here in the back. The reason you call them combinations because it serves as two purposes. Um, or, <clears throat> or they, they do two different jobs turn signal and uh, brake light okay so I'm checking my combination lights are red in color not cracked chipped or broken clean no condensation my reverse light clear in color not cracked chipped or broken clean no condensation we don't have to talk about screws here because well there's none I got my splash guards here on the rear not cracked dry rotted or broken all the hardware and screws are present they're probably mounted secure to the vehicle Okay, from this point, I'm going to turn around while I'm here, and we're going to start talking about the, um, the landing gear and the uh, cross members and the uh, floorboards of the trailer. So, basically, we're checking all these little metal beams that's going around, or going across, and then the floorboards. So, I'm checking my cross member frame, not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal holes, unauthorized welds. And then, of course, my floorboards. These are wood. Um, all are in a line, none are missing. They're not cracked, dry rotted. And there's no uh, holes. Or there's no holes in my floorboard, however you want to word it. Not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. No missing boards, all in a line. Um, whatever, something like that. Um, my landing gear frame which is going to be this landing gear frame it's not cracked, bent or broken no illegal holes, unauthorized welds or unauthorized welds 
my feet, landing gear feet are in the highest raised position, and my landing gear crank, which you can see here, is in the stored position. Okay. So after you've completed this this part here, we're going to crawl back out underneath the truck from underneath the truck and uh, start going down the side of the trailer. Okay, we're looking down the side of our trailer right now. And here on the front, we got our clearance lights at the top, and amber in color, not cracked, chipped, or broken, clean, no condensation. We've already got the header board and the glad hands and all that done. So we're looking at the side of our trailer, no holes, no cracks, no dents, all rivets are, are, all rivets are present, which are these little dots here. All my DOT reflective tape is present. And of course my side marker lights that are on the side. All are amber in color, not cracked, chipped, or broken, clean, no condensation. And all screws are present. Because I see screws. Okay. It's probably one of the easiest parts of the whole walk around. So we just covered the entire side of the trailer. Okay. Now, we get to the rear. The rear here, the uh, two rear tires, or the uh, rear axles, okay, of the trailer. Now, so many people go out and they think because, well, I've already said it once, I don't have to repeat myself. Remember, the examiner says in the instructions, go down one complete side. You are to say both of these tires exactly the same, back to back. Because if you don't, they will dock you for it, and this is a lot of points. I've seen people fail for not saying both of these many times. So don't think you can come up and say the first one and you say, well, the second one's the same. And I wouldn't combine them both either, just for the simple fact you might stand out a little bit more than you know most people. So just call them both out. It's just, just do it. It's what has to be done. Now, if you get into the second one, the examiner tells you to move on, then obviously you got to do what he says or she. But anyway, we've already done the hub oil seal up front. If you can do it up front, you can do it right here. This is my hub oil seal. Not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present. Filled to the proper level. It's not leaking. Check all my lug nuts. All are present. No rust or shiny metal to indicate looseness. I'm going to check both my rims. Remember, you got two rims here. And you only got one brake drum. I'm going to check both my rims and my brake drum. Not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal holes or unauthorized welds. My metal valve stem and metal cap, we have two now. Checking this one. And if you look up in the peephole, you'll see the other one. They're not cracked, bent, or broken. Um, <clears throat> not cracked, bent, or broken. Proper mount secured to the vehicle. I hear no leaks. We'll check our tire pressure daily with a tire gauge or a rubber mallet. Okay. Now, I'm going to check the outer, upper, and inner wall of both my tires. No ABC, abrasions, bulges, or cuts. These can be no less than two thirty seconds of an inch in the major grooves. Um, and these can be mismatched. Recap, regroove, or retread. Like I said, two thirty seconds. We're going to check for a sufficient amount of space. Put your fists in between the tires. They're not, they're not touching or rubbing. No obstructions, no debris stuck in there. We got a rear tractor frame back here. No, it's not on the side of the trailer. I had a couple students say that for some reason. Um, your rear tra your rear trailer frame is up here at the top. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. No illegal holes on or unauthorized welds. I'm checking my rear leaf spring mount. Um, if that's what you have, in this case, it's a little different. In this case, we have a control arm. No leaf springs. Okay. And one thing you want to look for, <clears throat> when you're doing mounts, we don't see any bolts or screws here. This is this has been welded, okay? So you don't want to get in and start talking about no missing bolts or hardware, and here we, we got a welded um, mount. So this is your control arm mount, or in some cases, single leaf spring. Um, but you can clearly see this is a different setup than, than a leaf spring. And what they're going to call that is a control arm, okay? Now, if you have the leaf springs like up front, they're a leaf spring. If you only have one, it's a single leaf spring. Or, aka, control arm. But anyway, control arm mount, or leaf spring mount, leaf spring front mount, or control arm front mount, are not cracked, bent, or broken. Um, 
no illegal holes or unauthorized welds because there's no bolt. So we're going to call it out no unauthorized or no uh, legal holes or unauthorized welds. Okay. My control arm, not cracked, bent, or broken. Probably mounted security to the vehicle. More than one fourth of missing could put the vehicle out of service. My air bellows, not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. I hear no leaks. And secure to the vehicle. I believe we got a shock absorber back there. Might have to get that in a second. We still got a U bolt and the anchor plate. If you, uh, if I can get you a view of that. Yep, there it is. My U bolt and anchor plate, not cracked, bent, or broken. All bolts are present, secured to the vehicle. Okay. Over here, got our air brake chambers. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. I hear no leaks. All bolts are present. My hoses are not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. The fittings are tight, and I don't hear any leaks. And of course, you're going to have some air tanks up here. Here's my air tank. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. No holes, no cracks, no dents. I don't hear any leaks. I'll drain these daily to remove any moisture or oil to prevent it from freezing in the wintertime. And of course the hoses are not cracked, dry rotted, or broken, and my fittings are tight. Now remember, wherever you got slack adjusters, okay, so air brake chamber, it's not cracked, bent, or broken. I hear no leaks, all bolts are present. My hoses are not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. The fittings are tight, and I don't hear any leaks. Remember, wherever you got an uh, air brake chamber, you're going to have a slack adjuster on the rear side of it. My slack adjuster sits at a 90 degree angle when the brakes are applied, no more than an inch when I pull out on it, and all cotter pins are in place. Now, <clears throat> don't forget to check your, uh, see if you got any brake shoes or uh, brake shield. And in this case, we do have a, uh, we have no brake shield. So I'm looking directly at my brake shoes and lining. No less than a quarter inch of thickness, no oil or grease present. They're not cracked, bent, or broken. Okay. So, got everything under there. Crawl back out. And again, even though I'm not going to do it right now, you just heard me say it. Repeat yourself for everything. If I've said it here, you're going to say it again. Okay? Unless the examiner says otherwise. I'm not going to do it because you just heard me say it. I've already done my test. So I don't want to do it or say that again right now. <laughs> anyway. Just repeat yourself on both of the maxes unless told by the examiner. Do not ask them to skip it. Okay? They might hit you with something tricky. Do not ask them. Just go ahead and say it. Let them stop you. My uh, splash guards, not cracked, dry, rotted, right or broken. My fittings are tight. Side marker light on the rear here. It's red in color, not cracked, chipped, or broken. Clean, no condensation. It's on the side as a side marker, even if it flashes, okay? The examiners are wanting to hear anything on the side of the trailer, a side marker light, okay? Now, get around here to the back. There's no lights up here at the top. You're only going to have them down here at the bottom, which is fine. I got my three ID lights right here in the center. My outside is going to be my turn signals. My inside is going to be my brake lights. Okay, so I'm going to check all my lights here. I'm going to check my turn signals, my brake lights, my ID lights, all of them. Not cracked, chipped, or broken, clean, no condensation and all the red in color. My DOT reflective tape is present. Okay. My license plate. This is a permanent plate. If not, I'd say it's current and up to date. Bands is a permanent plate. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Probably not secured to the vehicle. All screws and bolts are present. I got a tag light up under here. Clear in color. Not cracked, chipped, or broken. Clean, no condensation. I'm going to check my, uh, my doors whether it's sliding or, the, or if they open this way. So I'm going to check my uh, doors here at this point. If I open them, I'm checking to see that the uh, hinges are not sticking or binding, that it opens and closes properly. It's not sticking or binding. And when I close the door, it shuts flush. Okay? And you're going to check that on both sides. Tell them I would do that on both sides. Now at this point, that's pretty much everything you can do here on the rear. 
you're going to come down to the uh, or come over to the passenger side of the trailer and say this side of the trailer is identical to the other side would you like me to continue with doing this or uh, move on to the in cab inspection more than likely if you've done it right um, you're going to get to move on to the in cab inspection and um, right after the in cab and you're finished with that you're going to be moving into your backing skills and uh, don't forget your horn and flashers of course for that and then after that you'll be going on the road anyways hopefully you learned something and um, I appreciate it guys thank you alright we got the uh, class A uh, in cab inspection we just got finished with our walk around um, we did the entire outside of the vehicle and uh, got to the back of the trailer finished that and now we've moved on to the inside of our truck and we're ready for our in cab inspection now the thing I always told myself as I was learning is I would break it down into three different sections three different parts the first part I would do everything I could with the vehicle turned off um, with a few exceptions. It just helped me remember. Um, part two, everything I can do with the vehicle running. Obviously you have to start the vehicle for this. Um, and the third part will be the air brake integrity test which is the most important and you can actually fail automatically from that. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to start, like I said, everything with the vehicle turned off. It's going to be my seat belt. It's not cut, torn, worn, or frayed. Seat belt latch is not sticking or binding. Okay, we'll just pretend that's locked in there. Um, my seat's adjusted properly. I have no loose, loose items that may roll under my pedals. Um, I'm going to check my clutch pedal. No more than two inches of play. It's not sticking or binding. Um, brake pedal, it's not sticking or binding. Accelerator pedal, it's not sticking or binding. I'm going to go ahead and check my gear shift this time. And one thing I've always done is I try to make sure it engages in each gear properly and that it's not sticking or binding. My rubber boots not cut, torn, worn or frayed, no holes. Um, and I also have my three safe or three pieces of safety equipment, my 10 BC fire extinguisher which is on the other side, you won't be able to see that. Uh, my three reflective triangles and then our fuses down here we have some extras. We have three of those. Uh, however you're not going to need that with this vehicle because it does run off the of circuit brake. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check my mirrors for the proper adjustment. I have the perfect view of the end of my trailer. And um, <clears throat> go ahead and check your in cab light. And like I said, even though the truck is off, yes, that is off electricity at the same time. It's just easier for me to get this part done because it's a flick of a switch. Okay, at this point, you can go ahead and start your vehicle. That's pretty much everything you can do with the vehicle turned off. At this point, we're going to start it. Now make sure when you're with your examiner, you go ahead and step on your clutch. Um, do what they call a safe start. So you're going to step on your clutch. Start the engine. Obviously, make sure you're in neutral first. I'm in neutral, but just to be safe, I'm going to gently ease up off the clutch. Okay? That's what they call a safe start. Now you don't have to explain this part to the examiner. Um, just something you want to do, they will be watching. Okay, now once you start the vehicle, you don't want to waste much time. You want to get right into the gauges and you're going to start with the oil pressure gauge first. Okay, so I'm going to check my oil pressure gauge. It's uh, working properly. And I'm basically going to do a clean sweep from left to right. Uh, my water temperature, it's rising to the normal temperature. My uh, voltage, and this truck is actually electric. Um, we're going to go ahead and set that on gauge mode and hit the little enter button, and that's going to show us the volt gauge. Obviously, your truck's going to be a little different if you're watching this on the internet. Uh, if you're watching this in class, go ahead and, and push the button. It looks like a little enter key, and that's going to get you to the voltmeter. Going from left to right, we're going to check our RPMs. Hit the accelerator pedal, working properly. Our miles per hour, we're going to check that on the road test. Our fuel gauge is working properly, 
you want this to read between a quarter tank of fuel for Virginia and about a half a tank for Maryland or DC. We have our front rear air tank or air gauge and uh, they're working properly. They're reading between 100 and 125 psi. And um, if anyone's curious about this gauge here, you're not going to mention this. This is for your air bellows and uh, that's not needed for this exam. Now still keeping with the left to right, we finished our gauges. Uh, go ahead right into the air. Okay, you're going to turn your heat on. My floor heat is working properly. My defrost working properly. You don't have to check anything much more than that. A lot of people like to check the, uh, when they, you say in cab heat, they check the, the basically the, uh, I can't think of what it's called. Anyways, we'll edit that out. <laughs> um, face, face shot, whatever. Okay, we'll have to edit that part. All right, <clears throat> keeping with the left to right, we finished our air, we're gonna move on to our wipers. Now we're coming right to left at this point. I'm checking my windshield wipers. They're working properly. Have the proper tension against the windshield and not cracked, dry rotted, or broken. Uh, my windshield washer fluid, if you lift up on the handle, it's working properly. Okay. Checking my 20 inch wheel. No more than two inches of play. Okay. City horn. And my highway horn, which should be located here in the center. I'm not going to sound that at this time, um, just because we got our neighbors trying to be respectful. A lot of your air horns are going to be up top here, a little cable you have pulled. And these Volvos, however, they're going to be in the middle of the steering wheel, and you'll find your city horn on the outside. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, at this point, that's just about everything you can do except for your uh, indicators. Now, remember, you've already checked your lights on the outside of the vehicle. You've checked your function. Now, you're just going to check your indicators on the inside. So, let's turn our headlights on. Um, in our pre-trip it says check your headlight and indicator. Usually we had a green light here that would light up on the dash and we would point to it. That was the indication our headlights were on. Um, the best indication I can see here would be that our gauge would light up. So if you want you could point to the gauge or the gauges and they would light up letting you know that you, your lights are on. Okay. We're going to turn our high beams on. There's a little blue light here. It's hard for you to see, I'm sure, because it's daylight. Um, but that's my he my high beam indicator, and it's working properly. My left turn signal indicator, working properly. My right turn signal indicator, working properly. My emergency lights, or my four-way flashers, as they're better known, those indicators are also working properly. Okay. Now from this point, that's about all you can do. So now we're ready for the third and final step and that's our air brake integrity test and our tug test. So it's very important that you do this, this part right. Um, if you don't do this correctly, this is and will result in an automatic failure. Okay. Now, what I always said was the one, two, three. One, turn your vehicle off. Two, turn your key to the on position. And three, push in your valve. If you don't count the three, then obviously you're missing something. Uh, one thing in VA I've seen happen many, many times, if you know you started the air brakes wrong, if you ask the examiners to reset, nine times out of ten they will allow you to reset if you have not finished the entire uh, section of your air brake integrity test or the whole air brake integrity. If you haven't finished, normally they'll let you reset and restart and try to get it right. Um, don't bank on that. It has happened. However, you will fail this test if you do any any of these things wrong and you complete it. 100% without a doubt, your test will be over. Okay, so let's make sure that we have this part and we learned it very well. So, let's go ahead and start. Again, we're going to do the one, two, three. One, we're going to turn our truck off. Two, we're going to turn the key to the on position. Obviously, we're checking for our warning light and buzzer, and we're not going to get that without electricity. So we turn our key to the on position for our electricity. Three, we're going to push in our valves. Now remember, even though I'm in neutral, we chalked our, we chalked our tires before the test started 
therefore we're not going to roll away at this point, okay? Even though we're in neutral and I just released the brakes. Okay, so one, turn the ignition off, two, turn it to the on position, and three, push in your tractor protection valves, okay? Before you ever think of stepping on the surface brake. So now that I've done that correct, we're going to go ahead and explain what we're going to do next to the examiner. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Examiner, I'm going to go ahead and hold my foot on the surface brake for a full minute. At the end of this minute, I'm going to lose no more than 4 PSI. And I'm going to start that now. Okay. Now, you want to hold this with your examiner for a full minute. It's better to let the time run over than be a little bit under. Because remember, the textbook does not say 58 seconds. It says 60 seconds and they will hold you to that full 60 seconds. So be very sure you're a minute or over, okay? Now, get yourself a stopwatch, get yourself a, a wristwatch or whatever you need, but you will not be allowed to use your cell phone. And you cannot count on the examiners the time, okay? So make sure you have a watch with you. Okay, whether it's been 60 seconds or, or it's been a minute or not, we're gonna go ahead and say it's been a minute, so we're gonna release our service break. And then we're going to tell the examiner we lost no more than 4 PSI, okay? So now that's done, we're going to move on to our fan down test, okay? That's where we're going to fan our brake down to around uh, <clears throat> 60 PSI. We're going to get our warning light and buzzer. We're going to continue to fan to around 40 or 20, and that's where our tractor protection valves will pop out, okay? So I'm going to start that now. Okay, now if you notice the gauges here, we're down a little bit above 60, and that's why you say around 60, and you see these little red lights. That lets you know that's, that's your warning, okay? If you're out here driving, that's your warning to get the vehicle off the road. Um, once you see that on your test, point that out to the examiner, and these Volvos, you will not hear a buzzer until you actually start the truck up. Uh, for whatever reason, that's just the case. So, I always said and or buzzer. But make sure you point these out. I'm going to continue to fan around 40 or 20 until our valves pop out. And just keep pumping whether you think they're going to pop out or not. Just keep coming. Keep going. Okay, now we had our red one pop out, but our yellow one's still hanging on. There it goes. Okay, so now both valves have popped out. Okay, so from this point, we saw our emergency light. We know if we were driving, we had to get the truck off the road. <clears throat> if we didn't take the warning that the truck was giving us and we allowed these brakes to pop out, what good are these brakes popping out if they don't actually work? So that's the purpose for the tug test. Then make sure your tractor protection valves or your... Um, TPV valves actually work, okay? So at this point, you want to look at the examiner and say, uh, sir, ma'am, would you like me to go ahead and remove the wheel chalk? If they say yes, take the key, put it in your pocket, get out in three points contact, remove the wheel chalk, come back in the vehicle. If they say no, you can just leave the wheel chalk on and go ahead and do your tug test. If they say do it the way you were trained, all Shipper's Choice students are trained to remove your wheel chalk because it's not a proper tug test if that chalk is not removed. You don't know if it's the brake holding you or the wheel chalk holding you. So every one of you from Shipper's Choice is trained to remove that wheel chalk if given the option. Okay, so let's just say the examiner said no at this point. We're going to go ahead and start the truck. Safe start. Put on the you have to do your uh, tug test just a bit differently, and this is actually the way um, that you would perform this in the real world. This is the proper way to do it. You're going to build your air pressure. Technically, you only need to get your air pressure above the 60 psi mark, or excuse me, above the 40 or 20, above the point to where they popped out on you when you were fanning it down. But for Maryland, for DC, they rather see you. Get the air all the way up, at least between 100 and 120 PSI. Once you've accomplished this, you're going to go ahead and push in just one of your valves. Okay? I don't think it really matters which one. Uh, there may be an order. Um, 
I can't see why it would matter too much. Go ahead and push in either one. Push in, I pushed in the yellow one. We're gonna put it in gear, okay? And we're gonna gently raise up and give a little tug. That's one. If you wanna give a second, that'll be fine as well. Two. Pull that one out, push in your red one, okay? Clutch it down, I'm gonna put it back in gear. I'm gonna give another tug. One. And two. There's two. All right. There. Uh, if you guys didn't catch any part of this video, make sure you listen clearly. You can pause, rewind it, and uh, what else can I say but make sure you study, and thank you.